Making It in Botswana, a TV show that takes you on a behind the scenes look at how everyday items are manufactured right here in Botswana. Making It in Botswana, brought to you by Botswana Investment and Trade Center. Go Botswana! Today on Making It in Botswana, Chobe Aqua Farms takes us through the fascinating process of fish farming. We then head off to Maum to learn about how boats are manufactured with Ali Boats. This is Making It in Botswana. Situated in the tourist hub of Botswana, the Chobi district, Golden Wrap Pty Ltd Trading as Chobi Bream or Chobe Aqua Farms was established by Green Reeds in 2010 for the sole purpose of fish farming. The organization provides an intensive reticulation aquaculture system, one of the biggest of its kind in Southern Africa. Aquaculture fish farming has become one of the fastest growing industries worldwide in food production. Fish farming involves raising fish commercially in tanks or enclosures, usually for food. Worldwide, the most important fish species used in fish farming are carp, tilapia, salmon and catfish. In Botswana, there is a high demand for the three-spot tilapia, more commonly known as chobe bream. We started with this reticulation aquaculture system approximately three years ago. The RAS system means it's a reticulation aquaculture system, which means actually that we recycle a million liters of water through a system. We clean it through expensive filters and therefore our production can increase tremendously in a system like this. We did it after we realized the need for protein and especially fish production. Uh, unfortunately, the Botswana people, they really love fish. So that was a very big opportunity for us. Uh, we currently farm only with the Oreochromis and the Zoni or the three spot tilapia. Um, we cannot farm with anything else. That is the, the fish that's indigenous in the river. Um, we also call it Chobi Bream and we have also registered the trade name of Chobi Bream. So we have currently approximately 25 people in our employ. We trade under our company Golden Wrap now and we have uh, taken on partners of Cho from Chobi Holdings and Danish Africa Development with our own company Green Reeds. And we also get a few casual people all the time when we start slaughtering the fish. So our production uh, process starts with when we harvest the fish. We only harvest fish that we can clean for the day. So that actually um, proves that we can get, get a very good quality product on the shelf. So we, we only clean so many fish that we can clean for the day so that after that we process it immediately and we put it in the freezers. And most of the time it's almost sold out within the first day or two since we harvest. So the fish is very fresh and the quality is very good. It's actually well known for the taste of the fish because um, it's, not, it's totally different from the fish taste that you get um, from the river. And our customers, uh, normally we serve the, the restaurants, the lodges, even supermarkets. Uh, but our biggest customer base is the local people. Everybody is welcome to come and visit us here. Everybody is welcome to come and buy their own fish here at the farm stall. And uh, the, the opportunities that arise from this um, industry is really very um, diverse. Uh, we are busy collaborating with the government to put up small scale fish farmers. We want to do that in the interest of a lot of people um, contact us on a daily basis to start with small scale fish farming. So we want to help them and assist them in doing the design for them, but we need the cooperation of the government to implement this. So what we do, there's a big opportunity to start. Even if, if you start with a small pond, I just want to mention something that Egypt is currently the biggest um, uh, producers of aquaculture fish in Africa. And they um, produce approximately a million tons of fish every year. And most of that production comes from small scale fish farmers. So we have a vast opportunity here for people coming on board and start even if you start with one pond. We are in the process of um, trying to get the government to work with us so that we can get the people up and running and that they can harvest their own fish and it must be sustainable. So our 
uh, focus will be on the sustainability of the process. Um, th there, are, there are other opportunities like people can do their own fish, um, fish, uh, their, their, what do you call it, their, the fish food outlets where you have um, your cooked food. I see the Botswana people, they love their cooked lunches. So there's a, also a big opportunity to have your own um, cooked food outlet or fried fish or whatever you want to call it, make a small restaurant or whatever. And um, so the opportunities are vast. There are so many um, ideas that you could also do with um, the, uh, the products of fish. You can also do um, gelatine. I know they use the scales for gelatine or you can use the, um, the byproducts of the fish for your for crocodile. Um, we, we give it to the crocodiles for food. Um, everything that we, we need, we take the gut out and the scales off and everything like that. So we um, would like to extend a warm invitation to all Botswana people to come and visit us. We really um, would love to have you here. We also do tours on the farm. You can bring your kids. We also do tours for schools. And we would like to um, say a, a big congratulations and thank you to BIT Seed for initiating this program. And we would like to um, say good luck with everybody who wants to embark on this fish farming um, industry. Please come and help us. We make it a very big success for Botswana so that we can also export in the interest of our beautiful country. This is Making It in Botswana. To make the fish feel more at home, artificial nets are built in the bottom of each tank with PVC ring. The male will pick his nest and then attract the females to his nest to lay their eggs, after which he then fertilizes. There is only one way to harvest the eggs, and this is to dip right inside the tank. Harvesting is done through the use of nets, as is being done right now. The three spotted talabia are mouth brooders, which means that whenever the female is stressed, she takes the eggs into her mouth. Each fish thus has to be individually taken out, checked, and if it's a female with her eggs in her mouth, the mouth is rinsed out into a bucket of water. If it's a male, the fish is immediately returned back into the water. After harvesting, the eggs are then transferred into an incubator. The eggs will remain here until they hatch any time between one to six days. Water is added to the incubator to create a sense of movement similar to a river system, which is needed for hatching. The tiny fish go into what is known as a fry tank and on six weeks of age transition to fingerling tanks. Fingerling tanks will be the fish's home for the next two months in their growth stage. They can't go for 20 minutes without oxygen. As such, there is a standby generator that switches on automatically if the local power goes off. The food ratio is adjusted according to the growth of the fish. This basically means that feeding of the fish is done according to the body weight ratio. For the smaller fish, a ratio of approximately 6% is used and a ratio of 1.5% is used for the bigger ones. The bigger the fish get, the less percentage of their body weight they get in feed. The fish gets fed three times a day. Water quality is very important and is measured on a daily basis. Water temperature is taken three times per day. As such, the cycle from breeding to harvesting must run smoothly so as to avoid a bottleneck in the system. Once the fish get bigger, they are then transferred to what is called grow-out tanks until they are ready to harvest. Here at Chobi Bream, there are 56 grow-out tanks. Grow-out tanks keep an average of 15,000 litres of water where 1,700 fish are contained. The ideal weight that a fish must reach prior to harvesting is between 300 and 350 grams. This takes approximately 6 to 8 months in grow-out phase. 
This particular species of fish can only be harvested at 10 months old. Each grow out tank is numbered with the fish's birth date on each tank. The fish get weighed in samples of 50 fish from each tank every two weeks. This is Making It in Botswana. Mau, the administrative center of the Ngami Land District, also commonly known as Botswana's tourism capital, is also home to Ali Boats. Today on Making It in Botswana, Ali Boats will take us through how they make, yes you guessed it, boats. My name is Rod Bateman. I'm the managing director of Ali Boats. We are based in Maun, uh, in the middle of the Kalahari Desert. And some people wonder why we are building boats in the desert. Uh, the company started in 1986. Uh, there was a need to, to move people around the Okavango Delta when the lodges and tourism became a big part of the Okavango Delta. So we saw an opportunity uh, to build boats uh, we, we chose aluminium because it's strong, it's tough, it's hardy, it doesn't rust, it doesn't deteriorate. So we started building aluminium boats here in Maun in 1986 uh, for the tourism industry to move people around the delta, to move goods around the delta, to move freight. And since then the business has grown, the delta has grown, there are more lodges, uh, fishing camps, tourism has become a big part of Botswana. So we service that industry by supplying boats for... for uh, more recently, in the last eight or ten years, um, we basically saturated the Botswana market. So we had to start looking afield for more work. We uh, then started marketing, advertising outside of Botswana, websites, etc. And we now have a branch in Lusaka and we have just opened up in Rundu in Namibia. We sell to, or we export to most of the, the African countries, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania. Uh, at the current moment, 70% of our sales are exported out of Botswana. Uh, we are proud of the fact that we can build uh, we can manufacture things in Botswana, goods in Botswana, and, and export them to the likes of those countries. And we do me la hore, rile Botswana, le na ke Botswana, le musadi ame ke Botswana, le na umo business. Rai tu me la hore, rona Botswana, re kono ko ko producer di products mo Botswana se di exportiwa. And it is, it is really good for me to know that we can build, we can manufacture Botswana-produced goods by Botswana. Our, our long-term plan, uh, obviously because we are moving north, we are moving into the, the other countries, into Africa, is possibly to move uh, more production facilities into, into other countries which is of course why we've opened up in Lusaka and, and Rundu. And hopefully one day the Namibians can also say we produce boats in Namibia by Namibians and likewise for the Zambians. But they will all have our Ali Boats name, our Ali Boats brand on them, uh, which obviously, as I've said, started here in the middle of the desert in Maun. Uh, we currently produce about 200 boats a year. My personal goal is 365 boats a year. One, one boat per day. That, that's my personal goal, and uh, we hope that that is achievable. Just in, in closing, I would, I would like to stress and reiterate that out of our 68 staff here, only three are expatriates. So we are, are really, really a proud Botswana company. This is Making It in Botswana. The process of manufacturing begins here in the design office. Every type of boat you can imagine is designed here. Once the design is complete and approved by the customer, it is then time to gather the raw material. 
This is where the raw material is housed. The raw material used at Ali boats is called marine grade aluminium. There are many different parts to a boat, which require a variety of material. We have round aluminium poles, aluminium square blocks, and flat aluminium sheets. The first stage of boat making begins here, with the wide aluminium sheet. The sheet gets laid out on this clear cut machine. The desired shape is loaded onto what is called a computerized plasma cutter. Once loaded, the plasma cutter then begins cutting according to the required specifications received from the design stage. Known for its sophistication, the cutter ensures that aluminium is cut perfectly, with no errors. The cutting actually uses water and laser to achieve its precision cutting. After the aluminium is cut, it is then shifted to the bending section, where all cutouts are being bent to ready them for welding. This is yet another intricate process. It's done by computer to ensure maximum accuracy. Now this is where our boat starts taking shape. Once the cutouts are bent, they are taken to the welding section, where they'll be joined together to create the backbone of the boat, called a hull. It must be noted that at Ali Boats, there is no use of rivets. All material is welded here to ensure maximum quality guaranteed. To welding the hull together, an inspection for holes is carried out. The boat is then filled with water from a hose pipe to spot any leaks. It is essential to spot and fix any leaks at this point of production. At this point, it is time to prepare the floor of the boat. First, flotations are inserted into the base. The sponge flotations are placed to ensure that in the unlikely event that the boat gets a hole, it doesn't sink. After the insertion of flotations, aluminium flooring is added and welded to the boat. The chairs and other accessories can now be fitted onto the boat. After fitting, the aluminium chairs are covered with padding for extra comfort. It's not only aluminium which forms part of the boat. There's also an element of carpeting. The first point in the carpeting process begins with applying glue onto the back of the actual carpet and then to the helm of the boat. Then, before the glue dries on, the carpet is applied. This is done carefully to ensure that there aren't any bumps or lumps. It is then left for 24 hours to dry. Just like a human being needs a heart to live, a boat needs an engine to move. On the other side of the manufacturing plant, the engine is built and installed in the motor electrics department. During installation, all electrical and wiring takes place. After the wiring is complete, it is now time for testing. The first test will test both the engine and electricity within the engine. This is done in a water simulation system. After it passes this first test, it is on to the actual real world, the river test. If it checks out all the boxes here, then our boat is roaring to go.
next time on Making It in Botswana. We head off to Palape to learn how Makoro Bricks makes those sturdy yet picturesque bricks known as face brick. We then head off to Khaborone to learn how that fluffy white powder that we have all come to love, White Star, is manufactured by Bokomo. This is Making It in Botswana.